Taoiseach, uh, pretty much everybody from the right to the left to the centre is now acknowledging that the housing crisis we're facing in this country, the lack of affordable accommodation is now a very, very serious threat to economic uh, development of this country. Um, now, the eviction ban that thankfully your government decided not to oppose this morning uh, and maybe might progress is a very small piece in that uh, puzzle of trying to stop more people going into the horrendous situation of being homeless. Uh, but much more needs to be done. And the problem is, whether you're a nurse, you're a teacher, you're a construction worker, uh, many, many workers that we need to make our economy uh, work, often you're not eligible for social housing. Even if you are, you'll be waiting 10 or 15 years. Uh, but many are not even eligible for social housing or HAP, and they have nowhere to live. They can't afford rents of two and a half thousand euro per month. So I want to know, what are you going to do about that? Uh, I don't agree with HAP, okay? Uh, but giving HAP to people who can't possibly afford those rents, if they're earning average industrial earnings, is better than those people leaving the country uh, or, uh, or leaving the areas where we need uh, people working in key areas. Thank you. So something has to be done to ensure that af affordable housing uh, is available to people and also, as I've said repeatedly, uh, the purchase scheme where we Thank start you, to Deputy. purchase properties even if people are above the income thresholds for social housing. So, thanks very much, Deputies, for, for your questions. Um, I was asked uh, by Deputy Gould about the IBEC report um, on the housing crisis, um, and as I've said before, uh, the housing crisis is holding us back as a country in many different ways. Uh, yes, it's about people having to pay very high rents, first-time buyers not being able to uh, become homeowners, um, rising homelessness, but it's also holding us back economically, uh, and IBEC acknowledges that in their report. Um, that it is uh, an issue for employers uh, and uh, would-be investors uh, thinking of creating jobs or employing people uh, in Ireland. And certainly for the last number of years, when I meet with employers and I meet with um, FDI companies and major investors, uh, it is one of the concerns that they raise about Ireland, um, particularly around infrastructure generally, uh, but particularly around, around housing. They are also measured about it, because these are often companies that uh, have headquarters or big operations in places like London or LA or San Francisco or Lisbon, uh, where they face many of the, same, of the same issues, that they acknowledge that it's far from being uh, a phenomenon that's unique to Ireland. Uh, in relation to targets, um, we, we met last year our main target when it comes to housing, um, almost 3,000 new homes built in the country according to the CSO, and that doesn't include student accommodation, doesn't include uh, derelict properties being brought back into use. And we don't have the exact figures for social housing yet, but we think it's going to be in around uh, 8,000 um, this year, um, uh, which would be the highest since 1975. And of course, in addition to that, there are other forms of public housing now being realised for the first time, uh, like cost rental, for example. Um, we are going to review the housing targets. Um, we're aware of the work of the Housing Commission in that regard, uh, and it may well be the case that we need to increase our housing targets. It is important to bear in mind that the existing housing target uh, is to work upwards towards 40,000 new units a year by the end of the decade. Um, and of course, any housing target that we set has to be realistic. Um, we probably will have. We probably will add about 10,000 units um, to the public housing stock this year. Um, hopefully more. Um, would it be great if we could get to 20,000? Yes, it would. But getting from 10,000 to 20,000, even with the best will in the world, would take a bit of time. And we want to do it in such a way that we don't um, take the houses away from people who might be building properties for, for, for people to buy and become first-time buyers. Um, because what we want to do is increase the pie, make sure that more and more homes are built of all types. Uh, what we don't want to see is one form of housing increasing and another form of housing decreasing. Uh, and that's the challenge. And it's right to have ambitious targets, but they also need to be realistic ones as well. And I don't honestly believe, um, as uh, your party would claim, that just by electing you to office that somehow you'd be able to double the number of public homes built in one year. I don't think that's, that's credible. I don't think very many people do, quite frankly. Um, just on community employment, uh, I think, uh, like everyone in the House, um, knows from our constituency work uh, and our day-to-day -day lives how valuable community employment schemes are. 
uh, not just the work experience that it gives the individual, uh, but also the very valuable work that is done, um, whether it's in sports clubs or community centres uh, or social services. Um, but it is primarily a labour activation measure, uh, and the rate at which people are paid uh, is set at the level um, of job seekers, essentially, um, plus an additional payment recognising the costs that arise uh, from having to go to work. And certainly we're, we're open to increasing that allowance further, but that would obviously be a matter for uh, the next budget. Um, and I have to say I'm not directly involved in, in the talks in relation to uh, a pay increase for CE supervisors, but hopefully that can be agreed uh, sooner rather than later. Um, on the social housing income limits and HAP eligibility, uh, we have increased the income limits so more people can qualify for social housing and more people can qualify for HAP, and we do keep them under constant review. Um, Deputy Crow raised the issue of Shannon Heritage, and I know it's a matter of interest for Deputy Kerry as well, it reminds me of it all the time, uh, as recently as yesterday. Um, I, I'm not directly involved in those talks, um, but uh, I think the Deputy is correct to say that they do appear to be moving in the right direction, and hopefully we can have an agreement quite soon uh, that gives Clare County Council the additional funding it needs uh, to take over those properties and run them well, and they're really great heritage assets. I think everyone will know Bunrashi, Craig and Owen, some of the really best heritage assets uh, in, 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 in the region and along the, the White Atlantic Way. Um, on the jobs in, t in the tech sector, again, just want to sympathise with the workers in Google uh, who are getting bad news today uh, to um, wish their representatives the best in negotiating a goods redundancy and exit package, and I'm sure that will happen. Uh, and just to say to them that government is here to help, whether it's advice around job search and other job opportunities, educational options, training options, help setting up your own business, uh, government is here, to, is here to help. That's what you pay your PRSI for, and you shouldn't be afraid uh, to seek the help of government uh, in that regard. Um, what I think we are seeing in the tech sector is a retrenchment of about 5 to 15 percent uh, in most cases, probably closer to 5 percent in most cases. Uh, so that still means that there are more people employed in the tech sector uh, now than there were two or three years ago. Um, there are still a lot of tech companies that are hiring, uh, so there are opportunities there. Um, and of course, uh, I think we'll see jobs growth again in the medium term. Uh, the future is tech, the future is digital, the future is AI, it's robotics, um, it's VR, AR, um, all of those things. And there's going to be a lot of jobs in that sector and would encourage young people um, to take account of the news that we're hearing about job losses now, um, but be aware that it's still likely that there's going to be lots of jobs in the sector and to consider studying science, technology, engineering and maths. Um, just finally, in relation to the Spark Castle banking system, I, I do think an examination was done by the state on that, or by the government on that, uh, a couple of years ago. Um, two difficulties arose. Uh, one was my understanding at the time was that uh, there was no barrier to such a model being established in the state, but they wanted the state to capitalise it. Uh, and the state, as you know, already owns a number of different financial institutions. Uh, so the difficulty was twofold. One, uh, the request was there that the state would not just not stand in the way, but would actually capitalise it, which is a, a financial ask. And secondly, a real concern that rather than providing competition for the main retail banks, it would actually provide competition, um, adverse competition for on-post and, and the credit unions who we want to strengthen.